This video is sponsored by my favorite website creator, Squarespace, the best place to go when you want to get a domain or create a gorgeous website or an online store. Do you just love minimalist interiors but don't know where to start? Or are you unsure of what specific type of minimalism fits your style best? If so, look no further. I've listed the five main minimalist home styles for you to choose from, at least, well, according to yours truly. Although the minimalist style has some overarching themes like neutral colors, low contrasting patterns, natural materials, simplicity in styling, and buying less, as I see it, there are a few subgenres of the style, some different takes on the same concept. The most current way of doing minimalism is what's usually called warm minimalism, which is an updated take on the clean and simple. If you're curious about this new type of minimalism as a concept, I've already made a video on warm minimalist interiors and warm minimalist fashion. Links in the description. Now, let's take a look at some of the different interpretations of minimalist interiors to see if any of them are something that you'd like to try yourself at home. Now, I myself am born and raised Swede, and I'm like the clichéest Scandinavian when it comes to a lot of things, and especially when it comes to interiors. So you might think that my personal interpretation of minimalism would be the natural-born Swede style, and you wouldn't be wrong. This is like one of the very earliest versions of minimalist interiors with elements like 50 shades of wood, ranging from the blondest blonde to medium dark oaks and teak. This style has a serious love for everything sekelskifte, which is the Swedish word for turn of the century. We go gaga for hairy bone parquet, tall ceilings, for everything white, for ceramic wood burners, and hand-me-down allmoge furniture, which is the more traditional, rural, folksy Swedish style. We love furniture and surfaces with patina, where you see the years making a mark, creating gorgeous imperfections. There's a simple romance to the style, and I feel so much at home in these interiors, even though it's not how I myself tend to decorate. It's an easy place to start if you want to try yourself, because the eclectic variety of furniture and shades of wood will make it easy to mishmash yourself an inexpensive interior from the secondhand shops. If you're crazy about Scandi cozy modern homes, have you seen David's house tour videos over on our other channel? He has a bunch of videos from gorgeous Swedish cabin in the woods and lake houses. Go take a look, link in the description. I guess when most of us think of minimalism, we think of the declutter addict. The people knowing the exact amount of socks in the drawers, discarding everything that doesn't serve a very specific purpose. In the home of the declutter addict, each item has to work to earn their stay. This is an amazing way to live for many people and can be quite anxiety reducing, but I do have to say that minimalism having a reputation for being just this particular minimalist puts a lot of people off from trying the lifestyle. I have myself lived in a highly decluttered way back when David and I did the whole digital nomad thing and moved from place to place every month, just carrying our possessions in a couple of suitcases. I think it was a great experience and quite a fun adventure, but not a way I would like to live forever. If you do feel like your possessions are stressing you out though, adapting a bit of a decluttering addiction is not so bad a place to start. Another minimalist aesthetic that I just love to bits is the iconic designer collector. Picture a simple backdrop of white walls and concrete or wood floors, and in this light, bright, airy space, you have a collection of the most gorgeous pieces of furniture and decor imaginable. Every single piece shows them with care and love kind of like a gallery. The collector would never just buy a sofa because they need a sofa. The collector would rather sit on the floor for months while rummaging through vintage shops for that perfect piece. Luckily, the minimalist home is not overfilled with things because obviously, the more iconic a piece of furniture, the more expensive. This type of home is all about saving up for those showstoppers, but a good thing is that the showstopper pieces can easily be paired with simple, clean, timeless pieces from more inexpensive shops or second-hand places. To create this type of home, we need patience and passion for great design. I see this type of home more of as an ongoing passion project rather than a slapdash, let's decorate the whole thing in a day kind of thing. For the budget version, stick to the core. Iconic design furniture is bloody expensive, but the core pieces like glassware, lamps, kitchenware, and mirrors are easier to find at more reasonable prices. And believe it or not, going to those large, in the middle of the nowhere flea markets and car boot sales, you can really make a bargain on this stuff. 
Maybe out of all of the versions of minimalist interiors I'm talking about today, this is the easiest to love. The cozy Japanese homebody style is probably down to this or the Scandi aesthetic being most popular. So let's see what you think. Traditional Japanese interiors have that beautiful coziness about them that most of us feel relaxed and at home in, like we just want to listen to instrumental music and drink tea all day long. Low to the floor furniture and beds, white walls, lots of rich warm dark wood, different height floors, lots of stones and pebbles and paper and green plants, all executed in extreme simplicity and practicality. Although this style is easy for more or less everyone to love, I do find that it's one of the toughest ones to accomplish at home, simply because it demands such total dedication. You can't accomplish this simply by getting one low to the floor table. It's kind of an all or nothing style, don't you agree? The design collector and the scanned aesthetic are both easier because you can make your way there slowly by incorporating those elements with things you already own, but it's not as easy to create different height floors or wooden slidey doors. That being said, if you're thinking of building yourself your own home in the future, come on, wouldn't it be cool to go all in for the Japanese cozy homebody drinking tea on the floor aesthetic? What a dream. What do you think? What type of interior minimalist are you? Scandi turn of the century, the clutter addict, the sign collector, or Japanese homebody? Do let me know in the comments. I can't decide. I'm a natural born Swede, but I'm also so in love with the design collector style. Let's do a little vote off. Also, don't forget to check out my warm minimalism interior design and fashion videos as well. And give me a little like if you enjoyed this one and subscribe to David's home tour channel too. Links in the description. Do you want to create a beautiful site, maybe start your own minimalist interior design blog? If so, you should definitely do it with Squarespace. They have great blogging tools to share your stories, photos and videos to make it easy to reach your audience. You can also auto post your content to Twitter, Facebook or Tumblr and simply schedule your posts for them to be properly tagged and the descriptions and titles will show up correctly. You can of course add your social media accounts to your site so that it's easy for your readers to find you everywhere. Squarespace also have great traffic analytics so that you can see how many people are visiting your site, how long they're staying for, where they're coming from and what they're interested in, like interior design or food or maybe minimalism for example. So what are you waiting for? Go get your free trial today at squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash jennymustard to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks for hanging out today guys, this was fun. Puss puss and hey do!